Today we're going to talk about the Bike Riders movie and my opinion of it as a motorcyclist, biker, you know, whatever you want to call me. How you perceive this movie it has a lot to do with your experiences with motorcycles and with MCs. I've been riding motorcycles for over 40 years. I've never been in an MC, but I've been around a lot of MCs. I've been around support clubs. I've been around religious clubs like CMA. I've been around CVMA. I've been around some 1% clubs. I have some friends who are in 1% clubs, and I consider them friends. I've known them long before they were in the 1% club. Now, I went to see this movie with my wife and some friends of mine. Uh, a couple of my friends have been or associated with some clubs, including 1% clubs. So their viewpoint was a little different than mine, and we're going to talk about how they perceived the movie, what they liked or didn't like about it, and why. And I think their past experiences with MCs made them view this movie in a different way. They're looking for something different in it. As a young adult, I got into street bikes right after Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man came out. That was in 1991 when the movie was released. Uh, you know, I personally dug it. It was cool. If you haven't seen that movie, I highly recommend you watch it again. It is available on Amazon Prime, so you can go out and get you one of those free memberships. If by chance you don't already have Amazon Prime, I'll leave a link to it down below where you can sign up and get you a free trial. If you decide to keep it, great. It'll help support the channel. If not, that's cool too. But uh, you know, if you've got somebody that's got it on DVD, whatever, I recommend watching it again. Just remember, wear your 1991 lenses. It, it was made over 30 years ago. Now that movie and uh, Harley Davidson's motorcycle in that movie is very iconic. And in that movie we have some very defined good guys and bad guys. Even though the good guys are not law-abiding good guys, they have good intentions and they don't set out to hurt anyone. And when you're done watching that movie, you think those guys are cool. They're the good guys. Mickey Rourke and Don Johnson and, you know, you want to ride motorcycles and have a camaraderie, a brotherhood like that, and be, still be a good guy, but maybe be a bad boy at the same time. Bike Riders is not that kind of story. It's a different kind of story. So if you're looking for a Harley Davidson and the Marble Man with a hero and a villain and this great storyline and lots of action, you may be a little disappointed. The fact is, Bike Riders is based on a book that was put out by Danny Lyons. And the book I read, and it's an excerpt of a lot of audio recordings and a bunch of pictures and not really a story. So it is gonna take some embellishment, shall we say, for Hollywood to turn that book into this movie. And it does, but this is a unique film. It's based on a book. And when I say film, I mean film. It was truly shot on film, not shot digitally. And this movie is meant to capture the motorcycle club history and culture from that time period, you know, in the 60s. Kind of, you know, strings together the Wild One and Easy Riders. And this fits somewhere in that time frame in between. The book Danny Lyons created was a bunch of photos and recordings that are basically just like mini stories, but they're not really stories, they're introductions to characters that were a part of this scene back in the 60s in uh, Chicago area. That's what this is based off of. It's public knowledge that the vandals in this movie are based off of the Outlaws MC, a true 1% motorcycle club, one of the oldest in the United States. I've read the book, and if you understand what the book was, you'll understand why Hollywood and Jeff Nichols, the film director, did what he did to turn this into a story and embellished on those stories a little bit to create this film, something that Hollywood would back and produce. Now, I'm thankful they did create this. This is a capture of motorcycle culture and of motorcycle history from that time period. And as a guy who's read Sonny Barger's books and things like that, I found it interesting. Now, let's talk about what my friends who have been or around MCs thought or felt about the movie. They didn't like it. They didn't think it portrayed motorcycle club life accurately. Um, 
I don't know that any of them are old enough to know what it was like in the 60s, but they've been around people who were in MCs in the 60s, uh, whether it's you know family, relatives, friends that were older than them that mentored them when they first got into the motorcycle culture or what. But they have a belief that it was different than what this movie portrays. And I'm not saying it wasn't. I wasn't around. But their perspective of what club life was like then and how clubs evolved is different than the story in the bike riders. So they were disappointed. Now bear in mind, me and half a dozen to a dozen friends rode on motorcycles to the movie theater to watch this on opening night. We were the only motorcycles in the parking lot. Out of everybody else in the theater, nobody else was on two wheels except for me and my friends. The bulk of viewers for this film were not motorcyclists, but film people, people who like to go to the movie theaters, people who maybe like Tom Hardy or Austin Butler. I'm, I'm a big Tom Hardy fan. I thought he did a great job in this movie. I really liked him. I think he was the guy for it. I think this movie is worth going to watch, regardless of how my friends viewed it. If you're in an MC, maybe you're going to be disappointed. But if you want to see other movies like this produced and put out, you probably ought to go spend the 10 bucks and watch it anyway just to help support this so that projects like this can be done in the future based off motorcycle culture that might be different, might be more appealing to you as a person. Now, my wife is a big fan of Sons of Anarchy. I mean, she knows that's not real life, but she found it entertaining. And her perspective was the bike riders was okay, but she expected more action. She expected more like the Sons of Anarchy drama and action in it, and every five minutes were shooting something or blowing something up. So she was a little disappointed. Not that the film was bad. She just expected something different because of the motorcycle scene stuff she's seen out of Hollywood recently portrays things a lot different. Of course, it was a different time period. And based off the whole different thing. Now, as someone who has read the book, I thought they did a great job of taking what was in the book and turning that into a story. Now, my understanding, and I, I don't recall any part of this from the book, there's a, a kid in the movie, and I'm not going to spoil it for you, but the storyline around the kid and the ending around the kid is an embellishment that's not in the book, that is, from all accounts that I can find, not the real story. So you'll just have to watch the movie if you want to see the ending and know what I'm talking about, but bear in mind that the kid and the ending are an embellishment. Again, if you're interested in the history of motorcycle clubs and culture and uh, what life was like to be in an MC or around an MC in the 60s, then I think you will enjoy this movie if you go in not expecting it to be something and just watch it and try and appreciate it for what it is. Some of the things that I thought were interesting and part of the reason I wanted to watch this is that the motorcycles in this movie were time period correct. They got Jeff Milburn involved. Uh, they used time period correct motorcycles. If you are a Harley Davidson fan, you may know they came out with the Hydra Glide Revival this year. It's a, a heritage soft tail with a red and white paint stripe that's intended to look like a motorcycle from the 50s and 60s. And there is a red, I think, pan head with a white stripe in the movie that this revival looks like. It is pretty apparent that the bike that Harley Davidson released as an icon model this year is designed to resemble one of the bikes in that movie. I like the revival. I just did a review on here a while back. You can check that on the channel if you haven't done it already. Uh, but it is essentially a heritage soft tail that's been dressed up to look like an older bike. Very cool, very fun. Um, I really enjoyed riding it and I don't think it was a bad idea. Uh, I just think timing may have been a little off. They didn't get to promote that at the launch because the movie wasn't out yet. We'll see what happens now. Highly recommend you go watch the movie. Definitely something that I think is interesting and I want to see Hollywood get back into motorcycle movies. I think that would be great. The industry could use a boost right now and I definitely don't think these movies are going to hurt from that perspective. And I've seen some reviews where some people have had said that it doesn't portray motorcyclists in a maybe positive way and it doesn't. It's about what's supposed to be the 1% of motorcyclists. And I think most people will recognize that. The only thing I'm concerned about is 
will they associate everyone wearing a patch with being a one percenter? Because that's not the case. There are a lot of motorcycle clubs that are not one percent outlaw clubs that still have patches and rockers. So if you're not in the motorcycle culture, bear that in mind and try not to judge us motorcyclists based off of a movie. Y'all stay safe. And keep on riding. We'll see you in the next one.